Hi everyone, I'm Wayan Vota. I'm the co-founder and publisher of ICT Works, the blog of record for the digital development community. I'd like to show you 18 ways we are using artificial intelligence to improve outcomes in international development today. These are real examples, not just ideas or concepts, but practical AI solutions for health, education, agriculture, economic development, and more. First, a pop quiz. Do you trust AI in your daily life now? Do you use AI? Well, I think you do, even if you don't know it. You're probably already using Netflix, email, spell check, Alexa, and Google Maps, which are all types of AI. Now, second question. Do you help train AI in your spare time? Well, do you? I know I do not want to be enriching the tech bros of Facebook, Netflix, or Google. Yet every click online is training AI, especially clicks on social media. All of these are types of AI in our daily life. If you look here, Gartner's hype cycle for AI in 2024, you can see the many different types of AI and not just ChatGPT, a form of generative AI. Now, many things that we think of as just normal computer technology is really AI because AI is so common these days. See my previous examples. So I've categorized AI into seven different types. You may have seen a list like this with different categories from different people. I think there are as many ways to categorize AI as there are types of AI. <laughs> Maybe we should get ChatGPT to categorize them all. I know I did ask ChatGPT to categorize the main focus areas of USAID according to their fiscal 2024 budget. And here are the sectors of focus with each bubble generally representing the budget size. As you can see, health, humanitarian response dominate the list. I was surprised to see gender so high and education so low, but that's what ChatGPT found and I collab collaborated to make sure that it was true. I used this ordering and found 18 different ways that we are already increasing impact in international development and humanitarian relief using AI solutions. So let's look at these examples. First, in global health, we can use computer vision and pattern recognition to view blood samples to detect a variety of diseases. Back in 2016, a company called XRapid launched an automated diagnostic test for malaria that was 98% accurate. It was much better and faster than human reviews. Computer vision and pattern recognition works on any visual measurement, not just identifying diseases in blood samples or x-rays. For example, a company in India is evaluating malnutrition in infants using smartphone photos of babies placed next to a standard measurement reference guide. Amazing. You can also use pattern recognition with audio data. There are several efforts to diagnose cardiovascular diseases using coughs and other human-generated sounds. For example, Hefe AI is a commercial product available to consumers today that can reveal health issues like pneumonia, asthma, and tuberculosis. In fact, Wuhani AI in India is using pattern recognition of cough sounds to diagnose tuberculosis patients in poor and rural areas. You can see their workflow here. They are also recognize that diagnosing TB is just one step in the long process of curing someone of tuberculosis, which requires treatment over several months. Patients can avoid treatment, creating drug-resistant TB, which is even worse than normal TB. So how do we solve that? Well, Honey AI is using AI to predict which patients will be lost to follow-up visits and then proactively engaging with them to increase treatment adherence, all with AI. In humanitarian assistance, Google is using geographic information systems and predictive analytics to understand flood risk, which can kills tens of thousands of people per year and causes 4.7 billion in damages per flood in the US alone. For example, in 1999, over 35,000 people lost their lives in floods around the world. In 2019, the US experienced a total of 20 billion in flood damages. Hence, predicting floods can save lives and property. In Syria, HALA systems developed an AI tool to listen for different types of fighter aircraft and to predict their route, 
giving advanced warning to civilians of airborne attacks. This early warning system saves lives in man-made humanitarian disaster areas today. Humans are also causing massive deforestation disasters worldwide. Rainforest Connection is using solar power, sensitive microphones, and mobile phone networks and AI to identify the sounds of illegal logging in protected areas. The forest rangers can then identify where and what is threatening their environment and act to protect it. You can even listen in to the Rainforest Connection mobile app to add a human dimension to their technological advancement. Now, here's one of the coolest uses of AI. The Earth Species Project realized that there are millions of life forms on this planet, yet we humans can only speak to one species, other humans. They are using generative AI to create trans-species communications, ways we can talk to wild animals like birds and whales, and even one day, our two best friends, dogs and cats. Before we can talk to animals, we need to talk to our neighbors. We need to talk to them about land use activities in the here and now. The University of Pretoria and Build Media are two of many organizations creating digital twins of cities. That is designing a city in a virtual environment and then using that digital twin to run simulations. For example, how much rainwater runoff will occur if we build a parking lot here or an office there? Or what happens if we close a street to car use and prioritize pedestrians and cyclists? In international development, we should be prioritizing gender equality and women's empowerment. We can do that through increasing digital literacy, the usage of online tools that are needed for success in 2024. Women have often had limited educational opportunities for digital literacy and literacy in international languages like English. Autocorrect and autocomplete are two AI automation technologies that are so common we forget that they're true AI innovations that can greatly improve written text for those who are learning English later in life. <laughs> I'll be honest, I used autocorrect and autocomplete in creating this presentation, and I'm a native English speaker. Well, some of my African friends would say I'm a native American speaker, not a native English speaker. Fair point. We can promote gender equality, women's empowerment, and economic development by using generative AI to improve their business proposals. Services like Grant Assistant can help women write better proposals, democratizing access to government procurement and foundation support. In democracy, human rights, and governance, we need to be concerned about election violence in many countries, sadly, including my own. Several researchers found that they could convert written text into data for sentiment analysis. That is determining if a phrase is positive or negative in context and predict if inf influential actors are promoting violence in their speech. In a stunning discovery, they reached 85% accuracy in predicting Kenyan election violence in 50 to 150 days in advance. Enough time one would hope to reduce or eliminate that violence. AI can now instantly translate between a host of languages thanks to tools like Google Translate or Wordly. Wordly in particular is very interesting. It offers real-time verbal translation services via AI for conferences and meetings. Google and Apple now have smartphone apps that can translate text on documents in real time. An office awesome solution for cross-language business transactions. I used these tools recently when traveling through Hungary and Slovakia, where written text from street signs to menus were in a language I could not understand. Here is something everyone watching this video can understand. We need electrical power to thrive in the online world. Husk is using AI to understand both renewable power supplies and consumer demand and matching both better with many electrical grids. Clouds passing over solar panels can reduce power generation. Yet if it's harvest season, power demand can spike when processing crops. Using machine learning and automated adaptation, we can generate affordable electric power in rural areas to promote economic growth. AI can also help growing these crops. Plantrix is using pattern recognition on plant photos to detect pests and recommend control techniques. They can see patterns across farms and regions to predict mobile pest outbreaks like fall armyworm. EO Data Science practices another farm prediction. Rice crop yields just one month into the growing season. Many crop types can be predicted like this 
and rice is one of the most cultivated grains, making predicting its growth and yield to be a key food security for farm communities and even national security for rice importing countries. In education, we see natural language processing and communication tools like WhatsApp combining to be amazing personalized tutors. Here is Rory, a maths tutor from India that is seeing statistically significant increases in learning outcomes for less than $10 per child per year. Also, maths are one of the few subjects that translate across languages. Two plus two equals four worldwide. Finally, let's explore a situation where few things translate, educating differently abled people, especially those with difficulty communicating in any language. Here, LiveOx is using AI to present language cues to a person based on their context and previous conversations. It then builds on those cues on follow-on discussions, easing their communication burden and improving their lives with AI. Now I've given you an overview of the many ways we can use the seven types of AI in international development. Some of these examples use several types of AI in several ways. Like I said earlier, there are many ways to categorize AI and even more ways to use them. If you want to better understand how to use AI or any new or emerging technology, then contact me today. I'm easy to reach via email on weyan at weyan.com. I'm also looking for a new job as my current employment contract is ending soon. Get in touch. Let's solve your digital development problem together. Thank you for your interest in improving international development impact using AI. I appreciate it.